Hey everybody, Homebody Homesteader here. So you want to get into chickens. You want to raise your own meat. You want to have your own eggs. Yeah, that's a great idea. So the question comes up, what birds are you going to get? Once that question's answered, the next question is, where are you going to keep them? Are you going to buy a house? Something from Tractor Supply Company? Yeah, maybe. Or you could build something. Yeah, why don't you build something? You can build it the way you want. You get the added benefit of knowing that your own hands built it to your own standards, to your own needs. Well, there's a lot of videos out there that can show you how to do that. There's a lot of different designs, a lot of different options, depending on your needs. Um, if you want to learn how to do a pretty simple, lightweight, easily maneuverable, and cost-effective one, then I will show you about my latest design, this hoop house design, which is a mix of some wood framing on the ends along with cattle panels as the primary structure and rigidity. Um, if that's something you're interested in, then stick around. I'll take you through it step by step. If you have any other questions, you can always hit me up in the comments. And along the way, I'll give you a sneak peek at some of the other builds that I've done recently, like this run right here. That's a uh, house over top of pen for our layer birds. So we got the, the broiler house, we got the layer house, and then we've got all kinds of other options that we've come across along the way that I'll just simply touch on as we've progressed through this. Yeah, it takes some work, takes some money, takes some time to get the infrastructure in place, but just think of the peace of mind that you'll get and the sense of satisfaction from raising your own food, knowing where it came from, and having that self-sufficiency, that backup plan for if things aren't as available as they are right now. It's nice to know how to do some things and gain some skills. So if that's something you're interested in, stick around. I'll take you through it. I'll see you on the other side. These cattle panels here are 50 inches by 16 feet. So by putting the extra three inches, by putting a two by four on the end, rather than cutting it on the inside edge, it gives us 99 and a half inches. So when I put these cattle panels in and cut a small relief here, this will give us a perfect overhang to the edge so that I can then use a two by four to frame in the end walls and give it a little more stability. So. I'm going to cut these cattle panels down to 12 feet instead of the 16, which will give us a, an appropriate arch and bend that will still be stable as, a, as opposed to very flexible. And then I'll have four feet to work with for the end walls and gates to incorporate that in as some protection as well as uh, making the door when I frame in a door on the end nice and rigid by uh, using fence staples to secure it to the perimeter framing of the doorway. All right, so I measured out from the edge of the cattle panel and 12 foot brings us right to this, this support edge here. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut all the way across. 12 feet. So now before I fit this in, I want to take into account this wood notch here. So I'm going to cut out a small cross section here and about three and a half inches here. Actually, uh, we would do one and a half inches here. Okay, so now that we got those relief cuts there, um, we're going to go ahead and fit the cattle panel on the inside of the framing. And you'll see how I put the relief gussets in the corners 
and then I put a 2x4 turn flat at 50 inches in the center so that there'll be support on either end of this uh, bottom edge of the panel. So we'll fit it in there and we'll see how it looks once we get it fitted. It should be rigid. Let's go ahead and we'll walk it back and do the same thing. Fit it right in. Good. Okay. Walk it in. Pop it into place. And as you can see, that's a pretty good fit. Yeah, I'll bring you over here and get a look. Walk under it. So it gives you a nice even diameter. It's gonna be perfect for the kids to get in and out. They'll be able to walk in. So I will be framing a door. I'll be framing a door here at one end. My intention is to run a vertical two by four up here and a vertical two by four up here and then I'm going to cross this way and connect it to a support two by four that goes front to back on the top edge. So that should help take care of any of this side by side wobble right now. And then when we add in the other panel on the back side and zip tie the seams all together, it should be good and rigid. So we'll do that. We'll bring it back after it's done and show you how it looks. Push that edge down. There it is. Push there. Yep. Okay. Okay, so that's in. So now I'm going to go ahead and zip tie up where they join and put a fence staple in every three feet or two feet. Every two feet. So I am using, let's see here. I am using one and a quarter inch fence staples by Profit. I picked these up at the stock and field. I'm sure you can probably get them at a tractor supply company or anything like that as well. Next thing I'm going to do is use some 8 inch zip ties. These are uh, high temp, low temp, so they can go down to, they're advertised down to negative 40 degrees that they won't break. So I'm going to go ahead and zip tie, zip tie this main, uh, my main seam here where the two ends butt up and try to match everything up as tight as I can. So anyway, there we go. So it's already pretty rigid, it's not going anywhere out of the frame. So now I'm just going to start framing in the uh, support walls, get this main top vertical support in, uh, use the fence staples to secure that, and it should make it super rigid at that point. Now, you'll see there's been quite a bit of progress that's come about since the last portion of the video that I filmed, and the reason for that is because I had the concept of what I wanted to do. But I had to try and figure out the fine details of how I was going to fit it all together. So at this point, I've got the structure and all the supports of the hoop house that the chicken tractor done. And now it's getting to the point where I've got to put in the hardware netting. Close in the front a little bit with a few, I'll put I have a few more wood braces that I've already had pretty much cut to size. I've got hardware and hinges on the doors. So at this point, it's going to be covering up all of the cattle panel reinforcements along the bottom edge, along the outer edge, the front doors with the hardware cloth to keep the birds nice and secure from predators. But I will go ahead and give you a quick tour of what it's looking like all around and then I'll give you some specific measurements and layouts so that you can try to replicate this should you choose to. And I will uh, rattle off the measurements here. So starting on the bottom we had said that we went with um, a cut at six feet and that measures out true. We had six feet um, nailed on the ends of the eight foot lengths. That gives you the 99 inches you'll need for the 100 inches of cattle panel. Now, the next thing I did is I cut two vertical posts on the two by fours. 
that will frame our doorway and those should be cut at 48 inches. These are just a hair less, 48 and 7 eighths inches, 47 and 7 eighths inches. Okay, so I'll go ahead and cut them at 48 inches and then I had a 2 by 2 laying around, a 2 by 2 Go ahead and cut that and your measurement should there be 41 inches. So you're going to have 48 inches and you're going to have 41 inches and then I just did a little bit of a 45 degree bevel. That served two purposes, just aesthetically it made it look a little bit better and then also gave you less of a distance for the screw to travel using three and a half inch screws. Uh, now as far as the framing for the doorways, this is all AC2 treated outdoor lumber. So you have two uh, length cuts, two width cuts, and then just some gussets in the corners, which are just 45s. So let's see here. So the measurements you'll need here, those are 40 inches. So two two by fours cut at 40 inches. And then you'll have two two by fours cut at 32 and three quarter inches. 32 and three quarter to 33 inches, depending on your gaps. Um, so, 33 inches to 40 inches. All right, and then your four angled gussets, screwed out all together. I actually, when I secured it, I took screws um, up in through the gusset into the wood, and then I came back in from the outside and screwed in, securing the outer frame. I ended up going with a four by four post on the rear. Now initially that's just because I had an extra 4x4 post hanging around, but it actually worked out because what I was able to do is do a relief notch on the bottom edge where it meets up with the 2x4 as you can see there. So I did a 3 and a half inch notch by 1 and a half inch, and then I was able to use 3 inch screws to screw 2 in from each side, giving it a very good structural rigidity. And then you'll see, I'll zoom in here, what I ended up doing is you can kind of see how I fit this together. So what this is on the bottom here is an eight foot standard treated deck plank. And I set that on top of the post here, which I cut to 48 inches. And then on top, I filled it in with an eight foot length of two by four. So this serves two purposes. As you can see, this is the main it's the main uh, spinal support of the whole cage. It gives it a nice rigid um, rigidity as far as side by side. And it's also going to serve the purpose of allowing us to hang food buckets and water buckets from the top should we choose to. So I'll bring you around the rear. For the rear, I wanted to enclose the back half. So I wanted it to be fully enclosed because the top half is going to be, uh, the entire top half is going to be tarp. So I wanted a full enclosure, at least in half of the unit, so you get some wind and water um, protection. So I took and purchased a 24 inch by eight foot galvanized roof panel from Menards. And then these ends are actually a, um, a vinylized rubber flooring that I had a few boxes of. So I actually used that because I had it as the um, trim edges. And once I stain all of the exterior wood, I'm gonna go in sort of that red cedar tone. It should match and blend in nicely. So part of this is figuring it out, materials purchased, and then the part of it is just working with what we have to make it, uh, to make it complete. So you'll see as I put in these supports here, putting in some of these um, fence staples to really secure the cage to the framing. I'll give you the specific measurements of all this framing in back so that you can replicate it should you choose to. Come back around the front, take a look at the gate. Now I framed out these vertical posts at 48 inches, tied it in going through this caging here, secured it, and then framed in the doorway. And using the cattle panel on the front, not only makes the doorway quite rigid, but it's also going to give you um, a good back backdrop to secure all the hardware netting to to keep it nice and and taut and secure. Okay, so now we're in the uh, inside of the hoop house. 
and I want to show you some of the measurements for the back framing of the wall. Um, you've got this vertical post that I had mentioned is a four by four. And so this measures at 48 inches as well. Nope, I take that back. Because of the drop, you have to factor in the three inches of two by four, three and a half inches of two by four. So this is 51 and a half fat. A little, little more than 51 and a half. Um, this notch here would be one and a half inches in to account for the one and a half inch two by four. And that notch this way would be three and a half inches to account for the width of the two by four. Then again, very much like the front door we did, you're gonna cut two verticals and one horizontal support. So these verticals here are 48 inches. And 48 inches. And then as far as the top horizontal support here, that will be 42 and a half inches, 42 and a half inches. Now you'll have, end up having another two vertical supports towards the outside of the wall. And this will be to support um, this outer panel of galvanized roofing. So you have something to screw into the two by fours here. And so those should measure Looks like I've got them at 26 and three quarter inches. 26 and three quarter inches, 27. And the purpose of those is to support this horizontal piece right here. So uh, this ends up getting cut at right about 10 and a quarter inches. And then this outside bevel is a 10 degree bevel. And so if you construct this in the same manner, this is basically giving you one additional point of uh, contact and support for the back part of this cage here and then at that point I use a one and a quarter inch um, one and a quarter inch fence staple to secure it into the side of the 2 by 4 just to keep this cage rigid back here. Now we'll move on to the top rail. Uh, the thing I got to work on next is I want to go ahead and get my framing uh, framing pieces in here on the front basically duplicating what I did in the back I've got these pre-cut pieces that come up and just give that extra little support here in the middle of the hoop. I'll run a vertical piece down. That's going to allow me to uh, cut this remaining cattle panel here in sections to fit. So I'll tie it in here and here with fencing staples, here and here along this outer edge with zip ties after I've made my, my cut sort of follow the, uh, the pattern up. And then once that's done, we'll move on to securing all the hard wire, or the hardware cloth rather, which I'm going to run along the bottom three feet and up over the top feet here. And, all right, so I'm checking back in now after I got the front uh, walls framed in and the cattle panels cut and stapled into the frame. I unrolled a 36 by 10 foot roll of half inch hardware cloth. Um, for this particular design, about 30 feet will be needed. You got a three foot by 10 foot roll was able to do this entire side starting from the back, working my way up to this corner, at which point I secured it up to this point and then trimmed along this skeletal line down to about here. So I was able to bend it around and then, and then uh, keep this bottom edge straight and then I came back and trimmed this curve of the, of the um, hardware cloth and then went back and zip tied everything. So you have a few, few sharp edges here that I'll end up grinding down a little smoother, but that lets you do it in one consecutive piece. And I'll give you a closer look. So I just wanted to bring you back for a uh, quick update of a few additions and a few last minute changes that I've made. Um, so in the mail from Amazon, I received this pair of Ameritop motion sensor solar charged spotlights. So I mounted those on both the hoop house and the chicken coop uh, with the permanent housing. 
and it will aid to not only light things up at night if we have to come out and tend to the birds, but also it'll be an added safety feature, try and uh, deter any animals that might come prowling around at night. As far as the chicken coop, the, the broiler house goes, I originally had the tarp from front to back with full coverage. Well, I made a change. I pulled back the tarp, leaving a portion up front exposed so that uh, they can get better airflow and get some sun in there. With the tarps, you got to be careful because they will trap in heat and it will become very, very hot for the birds. And it's very important, especially with the broilers, to keep them comfortable and cool so that they don't work too hard and end up having a heart attack before it's time to harvest. So, um, all said and done, this is what I'm happy with. We're going to run this for a while and see how practical and useful it is. If uh, you have any questions or comments, please be sure to leave them in the comments below. If it's giving you the confidence and the direction you need to make your own version, that's cool. I have no problems with that and I'm, I'm glad that it's helpful. If, if it is helpful, go ahead and drop a like and uh, maybe even consider subscribing. We'll be putting up some more chicken related, homestead related videos as we learn things and we'll share them since we're going through that. And hopefully it will help your learning curve decrease. All right, signing off. Until next time, be well. See ya.